everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen wishing you a very, very happy start to your week. It is Monday here in Sydney. The sun is shining, the birds are literally singing. In fact, they were singing, it was, cock it was our cockatoos. A whole swarm came across the house this morning and I think there was the odd kookaburra thrown in there and if anyone has ever experienced, anyone outside of Australia has ever experienced a kookaburra, it really is an exceptional moment in time. It's not something bird-wise that you would never expect. The noise that comes out of a kookaburra, you would never expect that to come out of a, uh, a bird. <laughs> it's pretty full on. So. The birds are singing, the sun is shining, and do you know what? I love Mondays, I've said this before, I'm, I am a big fan for me. You know, it is, yes, it is the start of a new week. It's when, you know, we get to start again. Maybe the week, there was things we could have done better, and then you get to Monday and you're like, yeah, let's do this. But let's just say, let's just say, and kia ora to Thomas for joining me, and to the beautiful Amanda too, it's good to have you joining me today, my loves. Um, you know, just let's just say that maybe, maybe things didn't go to plan for you over the weekend, you know, just maybe, you know, things could have gone a little bit better. And I know I normally start a Monday off with, um, you know, with a really good, healthy, savoury dish. I thought I would start today off with a little treat. I would start the week off with a treat for us, for you as well, for all of us. And this treat is my, I call it my, well actually I didn't name this. One of my lovely, lovely, gorgeous friends, Tracy, named it Personal Brownie. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I think I need my own personal brownie. And I'm like, you know what? We all need our own personal brownie. So this is in honor of Tracy. This is her personal brownie that she named. I personally named it my gooey chocolate brownie and Tracy renamed it personal brownie. And the reason is a personal brownie because the ingredients that I'm giving you guys for this recipe, you can make into individual brownies. So you don't have to share it with anyone if you don't want to. But in saying that, this recipe actually makes two individual brownies. So you could share it if you want, or you could wrap your brownie up, put it in the fridge and don't tell anyone and that's your personal brownie for later on in the week so it's up to you but it's one of these recipes of course you guys know me it is gluten free it is sugar free and it is dairy free as well so it's got all those wonderful things in there you do not have to worry if you are um, currently on a gut health program this is maybe one you want to just hold off hold off so you're at the end of your month or whatever it is you're doing through because it is a healthy treat and yes it is available in my healthy treats ebook if you want to purchase it I think there's another 30 recipes in there healthy treat recipes you guys know right I'm about to launch this book we're waiting for it to clear customs right now as we speak it's on the ports in Auckland this is my uh, ports in Sydney this is my second gut healthy book and already you guys are calling for the healthy treats cookbook and I haven't even launched this one yet so Thank you for all of those people who have said, Bridget, when are you going to put together a healthy treats cookbook? Because you want it in hard copy. Totally get it. Let's just launch this one first, right? Because there are healthy treats in here. You just go to the yellow section there, and there are healthy treats in there. And you know what healthy treats I have in here? One of my most popular recipes is actually in this book right now, and that is my banoffee pie. So that's, you know, the banana and toffee pie, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, of course, all that sort of stuff. So you get my banoffee pie in here. You also get my, oh, but look, this is just another photo of me holding the banoffee pie. Gorgeous. Gorgeous photos, right? Gorgeous. You also get mycelium husk bread rolls, which are wonderful. You get, ooh, turmeric and fennel crackers. These are phenomenal too. Really good for anyone who suffers from inflammation. Actually designed that recipe for my dad who has osteoarthritis and I want to give him as much turmeric and as many wonderful forms as possible for his arthritis and that's why we've got the turmeric and fennel crackers which are easy to make because you guys know me my recipes are always easy but they're delicious too they're in there but we've got lots and lots and lots of gorgeous things my aroha bars my five minute feed jello and coconut sponge cakes and there's gorgeous stuff in there so there's healthy treats in there that book like i said we're going to start sending this out to people who have pre-ordered in the next couple of days as soon as it's cleared customs and then it goes to our fulfillment center and i cannot wait to get this to you if you have pre-ordered your copy of more from bridget's healthy kitchen more from bridget.com to get your copy not only do you get this book sent out to you within the next week 
but that means it's sent out in the next week so expect it to be there I'm saying early November but you also get a copy of my ebook which is with the designer now which is Bridget's healthy breads and pastries 32 recipes of goodness all right but enough from me let's get into the recipe remember this is your own personal brownie times two so you can either share it with a friend or <laughs> You could just maybe keep it to yourself and have a little spare for later on the week. But it's really easy to do because this is how we do it, right? We always make sure that things are really easy to do. Things are um, great for our gut health. Things are, you know, gluten-free, sugar-free. This is how we do it, right? This is how we do it. And please share this because the more people that you share this video with, the more people that can also enjoy and what we are enjoying. This is a healthy life and a healthy lifestyle and energy and all that fabulous stuff. So... Let's get into the recipe. As I was saying, it's really easy. It's not a, this is not a hard one. Come down to my bench. Come down to my bench. Look, I don't even have a chopping board today. That's how easy this recipe is. So I am going to start with mixing together the dry ingredients. So I like to do that. I keep the dry in one place, and then I keep the liquid ingredients in another place. So I usually have like a jug or something like that sitting off to the side. So we're going to start with the dry ingredients, taking up our, our little... Um, Scales, put the bowl onto the scales and then zero it. That's what you want to do. You want to zero it so it's now at zero. So anything I add into it now will just be measuring from, from scratch. It just saves so much time of putting things into little bowls. We're going to start with almond flour. This is my huge big container of almond flour. I was at Costco yesterday. I managed to find a couple of hours and make my way to Costco. So I I, um, I stocked up on almond flour, it's pretty cheap there. So we're gonna add into our bowl here, remember this is for two people. We're gonna be adding 45 grams, which is around about 1.5 ounces of almond flour, so not that much. So that's our base. We're also going to add, and this is what gives us the chocolatey, gooey, chewy chocolate. I have, I know it's backwards guys, but that is just raw cacao powder. So cacao, is basically the chocolate before it's even processed. There's nothing had done to it, but it's been turned into a powder. It is unsweetened. There's nothing else in here, but basically the start of chocolate. So this is really good for us. You can find that in the health food aisle of most good supermarkets, or definitely you'll find it in a, in a health food store as well. So we're adding raw cacao, and we're gonna be adding 20 grams of raw cacao into the bowl. 20 grams, Bridge. Don't go overboard. 20 grams, because it's quite bitter. You know, this is a bitter dark chocolate. So, you know, I am being quite careful with my measurements because I don't want to blow people's heads off with it being too bitter. And as much as I like bitter sweet chocolate, this is definitely, you couldn't make, put it this way, you couldn't just make uh, a, a chocolate drink from this because it would be quite bitter. You would have to add things. And in fact, I did a hot chocolate recipe a couple of days ago on Bridget's Kitchen. <laughs> you can go back and scroll through the... Uh, the post on Bridges Kitchen, you'll find my hot chocolate recipe, which is obviously really good for us. So, raw cacao, almond, raw cacao powder, almond flour is in there. The next thing we want to add is our inulin. Remember, we're adding it. We're making it a prebiotic. We're adding dietary fiber. And we're also adding that little bit of sweetness. And I'm going to be adding 25 grams of inulin powder into that as well, which works out to about... Two and a bit tablespoons. About that much. Yep, goes in there. We need to give it a little bit. We need to give it a little bit of a raising agent. I'm going to be raising it with baking powder today. You can get, um, you can get, obviously, I don't have to tell you, we can get baking powder. You all know. You all know baking powder. I happen to have a Edmunds, which is a New Zealand baking powder. It's actually not, it's just the tin. Had a tin for years. It's got Aussie baking powder in there. Just saying. You know, just got the tin, got the tin. All right, a teaspoon of baking powder goes in. That is going to be our raising agent. That's what's gonna help us to give us a little bit of a lift when it cooks, which is wonderful. We're gonna add a pinch of Himalayan salt. The salt is there just to help to bring out the flavors of everything else we've got in there. So a pinch of Himalayan, and that is our dry ingredients done. Just give it a stir. You don't have to be like too crazy. I'm using a teaspoon, that's how, how inconsequential this movement is, like literally. You're just mixing it together. It'll continue to mix as we add the wet ingredients as well. But dry is done. So what we can do now is we can just put the dry ingredients off to the side. Because now we're going to deal with the wet ingredients. So I'm going to place this on to the 
scale, I'm going to zero it again, so it goes back down to zero. Zero, um, and because it's a liquid, I'm going to change it to a liquid um, formation, which is milliliters. Just changed it with the mode on here. So already in here, I have 30 mils of water. So that's our water component. It's already, you can see that? It's already in there, so that's good. I don't have to worry about measuring that. But what I do need to measure is some olive oil, which is over there. I'm just going to go grab it. I forgot to grab it earlier. Bit of olive oil. No, actually, I lied. In, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I have to apologize. I have altered this recipe a little bit. So, in the recipe in Bridget's um, Healthy Treats, if you have that ebook. It is 25 mils of Grove avocado oil, or just avocado oil, which is wonderful. I don't currently have any avocado, I'm run out. So there are alternatives that I wanna share with you guys. One of those alternatives is, you could add 25 mils of olive oil, which I was about to grab. But probably the better option is 25 mils of melted coconut oil. Because we know that coconut is a great healthy fat for us, really, really good for us. And coconut and chocolate, those flavors just work, right? So your best option if you don't have avocado oil is go with your coconut oil, which I have, I always have coconut oil. So I'm gonna add that into my wet ingredients and I just melted that very gently so it's liquid. That's all you gotta do, that goes in. Fabulous. The other thing we're gonna add, and I refer to this as wet ingredients because it's wet, is we're gonna crack in an egg, just one egg, goes in. We are also going to add in the, um, the second to last part of our, our little wet ingredients. I know it's gonna look really nasty. You're gonna say, why would you do that, Bridget? Why, why would you do that? I'm, it's just a banana, but, <laughs> but it's a ripe banana. And the reason why it looks like this is because I had it in the freezer. So I freeze all my bananas because the sweetness that you get from this and always having bananas in the freezer means you can add, you can make your own personal brownie whenever you need because you're never short of a banana. So that's a great way. If you find bananas cheap, throw them in the freezer, literally, and then just bring them out, either defrost them overnight or just microwave them for a minute and they will defrost. And what you will get, please don't gross out. I know it's, for some you may want to avert your eyes, but look, it is, oh, it is perfect, <laughs> perfect. The riper the banana, the sweeter the outcome. So yes, I do have, and I went out and bought these today, this morning, went to my favorite veggie shop in um, Sutherland, Shire here in Sydney, went to my favorite veggie shop, Whole Fruit Market, and I bought some bananas because they were actually quite cheap, but this is nowhere near as sweet as that one there. That was a ripe banana, so ripe that the only thing I could do with it was freeze it. No one would ever eat it. So keep these for eating if you want, if you like bananas, you know, it's a good texture. Once they get past their use by date, just freeze them, pop them into a, into a plastic bag and freeze them because then you've got this sort of ability. So you want to add one large ripe banana to the mix, one large ripe banana. The only last thing that we're going to add in liquid wise is I've just got a little bit of, um, a bit of vanilla, pure vanilla extract that's going to go in there. There's half a teaspoon, it's going to go in there as well. Whoops, I'm going to take up my little blender. This is, this is the one from Aldi. Love, love it. It's come a bit higher so you guys can see what's happening. Absolutely love it. That's going to go in. That's why I use a jug, right? Done, easy. <laughs> couldn't be easier. I mean seriously, couldn't be easier. Give it a bit of a blend. You don't have, if you don't have one of these little machines, you can totally do that by hand with a whisk or mash the banana before it goes in. But we have, what we've essentially done is we have kept the dry ingredients in one bowl. We have kept the liquid ingredients in another bowl. All we need to do now, because that's pretty much all the ingredients we're going to be adding throughout this entire little cooking class, is we need to mix them all together. So let's do that. Liquid goes in, make sure you get it all out. You don't want to miss anything, right? This is the important part. Put your liquid in there. Then you don't even have to be too concerned. It comes together. I'm going to use a tablespoon just to stir it together. Look, this is what I mean. This is easy stuff. This is so, 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 so easy. And you're just blending it. Yes, I know it looks quite, it looks quite wet. It's quite a wet mixture, but that is exactly what it's supposed to look like. See that? That is what, I know it looks like, glo like brown, 
We won't go there, gosh. We won't go. It looks like a brown blob, I was thinking. Like a big brown. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I have audience. She's laughing. She's giggling. She's giggling. My audience is giggling. It looks like a big brown blob. And that's exactly the look you're going for. That's perfect. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> Let's think about what we're going to cook it in. Remember, it's an individual brownie. So look what I've got. Oh my god. Aren't these the most gorgeous things you've ever seen in your life? They're a little individual... I don't even know, egg pans, and you know, chefs have crazy stuff in their lives, and these are one of them. I don't use them to cook eggs in individually. I actually use them to make brownies, because they're just the perfect size as far as I can see, and they're non-stick. Of course you don't have to go out and buy these. You can find anything individual to cook your brownie in. You could put it in a muffin case, and put it in, absolutely do that as well. You could um, put it in ramekins, and cook them in ramekins. If you have one of those, those Kmart pie makers, make them in the Kmart pie maker. Like seriously, you choose what you're gonna make them in. I just happen to make them in these because they're pretty, pretty cool. But if you double or triple this recipe, the same recipe, you could also consider making it in something like this. This is actually a wooden crate. Would you believe it is a baking crate, timber crate from these guys, the Timber Cake Box Company. This is the most amazing thing to cook your brownie in. Like literally I put baking paper down and then I cook a larger brownie in here using exactly the same ingredients. I just multiply it by two or by three. So, uh, two goes really well in here. Two times the recipe I've just given you. In here, fabulous. But then you've got to share it. That's the only problem. You don't actually do personal brownies. So you can totally do it in here. This wooden crate or in a loaf tin. You guys decide. The options are there 100%. As I was saying, I'm going to be putting it in these little cool little non-stick individual egg pan thingies but the reason i'm using them is because you can notice the metal handle i can actually pop them into the oven which is really really cool so i don't have to grease anything because it's non-stick fantastic right no greasing required the only last thing i'm going to add into my mix here is i have some organic cacao nibs so you remember how we talked about this basically being pure cacao and all they've done is powder it down so it still retains all its nutrients and vitamins there's no additives there's no sugar there's no nothing these are the the version of cacao before they're ground to a powder they're called cacao nibs and they're kind of like these really hard pieces of you know quite bitter chocolate so we're going to add that in because guess what that's going to give us that's going to give us texture so in the recipe i say about 10 grams of the cacao nibs, which is about that much. You can add those into there, give them a bit of a stir just to combine. But you can also now, I've given you the base of this of this recipe, you can create it however you want to create it. So there is nothing stopping you from grabbing yourself some sugar-free uh, chocolate chips and throwing those in as well. How delicious will that be? Maybe you want to add some goji berries or you want to add a little bit of dried fruit in there. 100% dried cherries would be our amazing in here dried cherries would be incredible so yes you could add more chocolate if you love a bit of you know sugar-free chocolate or those cacao nibs or you can actually think a little bit outside the square and go for something like a dried cranberry or even a dried blueberry because all those berry flavors go really well with chocolate so let me know actually please i'd love you to share if you have um tried to add another have had put another addition in, into this that you love please share with me i know personally i've done dried cherries and they were like seriously phenomenal so we're now just going to portion this out as evenly as you can it just goes straight into your little containers like the recipe I've, like I said I've given you I've basically given you a recipe for two decent size like these are quite large when they're cooked personal brownies personal gooey chewy chocolate brownies but if you are using smaller things to cook it in you might actually get three or four portions out of this one depending on the size that you want but I have to say that this particular size here is like perfect if you're doing a dinner party you could literally serve it in like serve it hot in the um you can serve it hot in its little container just like that with some topping and when i say topping i'm talking about maybe some coconut cream would be really nice in it like just over the warm brownie some coconut yogurt or something gorgeous like that would work really really well but you've got to cook it first of course because that raw so 
We do have to cook. Oh, look, I can't waste that. Gosh, don't forget that. This, that's, I mean, normally the kids would all be, you know, around me now. And they used to be when they were younger. They used to spend a lot of time, you know, touching my, touching my, my, my skirt saying, Mom, can I lick the bowl? I don't do that as much anymore. They're getting old. Oh, it's so sad. But there you go. So we are just going to put that in there because we don't want to waste any of that goodness because that's where the goodness is. And if you've got a few leftover chocolate, you know, sugar-free chocolate chips, let's also add those just to the top. And all you need to do now is bake it. And there's a couple of ways that you can bake it. You can pop these into your oven set at 160 degrees. So it actually doesn't need a lot of heat. 160 is around about 320 Fahrenheit. So it's sort of, me it's not quite medium hot, it's just below medium because you want to cook it gently. You don't want to overcook it. You don't want to, you don't want to ruin it by creating too much heat. And these are going to go in the oven for only about 10 to 15 minutes and these will be cooked. But you could also cook these in your air fryer. Set it once again at 160 degrees. They will take about eight to 10 minutes to cook in your air fryer. Just make sure whatever you decide to cook your brownies in, they are oven proof. So make sure there's no plastic handles or, or anything like that. Just make sure they're oven proof. And then, you know, in 10 to 15 minutes after you have done this, you then have chocolate brownie. I don't expect you to wait for that. I'm going to show you. Here's one I did earlier. And I actually did this one I'm going to show you in this wooden crate. Once again, 160 degrees. It went into the oven and it was in the oven because it's quite a large piece. I had it in there for about 30 minutes. And what I, the result that I was left with, please check this out. Dun, 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 dun. Here's some I've produced earlier. I want to show you guys just how tender and soft that is. Check that out. Isn't it, is that in focus? I really want you guys to see. Oh, it's so gorgeous. This is the brownie that I cooked in here and here. It took about, like I said, 30 minutes, and you are left with this gorgeous, so decadent, so succulent, so tender, so moist. This sucker will not dry out on you. I'm telling you now, this will keep going. This is moisture plus. Just break it in half. It just breaks in half. There's no dry crumb here. This is a ooey gooey chocolate brownie. Personal, maybe I, I did actually have to share this, but I'm gonna put this away. <laughs> I'm gonna hide it. Don't tell anyone, but I'm gonna hide this in the fridge. I'm gonna hide this in the fridge just for later. Um, yeah, just for later on in the day when you need, like I said, when you need a bit of a treat. But I've also got, obviously, those, those round ones going into the oven now to cook. And like I said, they won't be there for long. 10, 15 minutes in the air fryer, about 15 minutes in the oven, set it at 160. The best way to tell if they're ready is just very gently touch the top of it with your finger. It should just spring back at you. So it should be spongy, but when you depress it slightly, it should come back up. The other way to tell whether it's cooked is take a little skewer and insert it right into the middle. Remove the skewer. And what you should get on the end of your skewer is not like raw dough, but more like little slight crumbs that are sticking to it. That's another indication that your brownie is cooked and yes the best way to eat your brownie is hot <laughs> like seriously just do it hot serve it for dinner serve it to yourself it is fabulous i hope you enjoyed this class i know we have um we have some wonderful people joining us from all over the world today please guys share this video share it with people you love because the more we're able to get out this message that healthy eating does not need to taste like rubbish it can be delicious, even if we take out the gluten and the sugar and the dairy and look after our body and look after our gut health, the food still tastes delicious. So this is one of those food still tastes delicious recipes for you guys. It is available in Bridget's Healthy Treats ebook, which we launched a couple of months ago. And of course, this is about to be sent out to everyone who's pre-ordered. You can still pre-order and get a copy of my Healthy Breads and Pastries ebook that will be given to you as a thank you for supporting us. All right, guys, enjoy this Monday. Let me know. I'd love to see some photos if you've made this recipe soon. I'd love to see what you've done. All right, guys, take care, and we'll talk to you really soon. Okay, bye.